Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel Pisces Paperbacks and today I'm going to be doing a very belated wrap up of the books that I read in May. This is a bonus video so I'm still going to be posting a video later on this week that is like the video for the week but I couldn't think of a, a good time to post this video that wouldn't like delay other things so I'm just gonna get it out there in the world especially since it's been two months already. Hopefully this won't take too long because I only read five books in May. All of those books I believe were read before like the 10th so I read all these books pretty early on in the month and then didn't read anything for the last half and I will just jump right on in and tell you about what I read so the first book I read I think I most I think I finished it in May or maybe I read the whole thing in May I'm not really sure but that was the lost apothecary by Sarah Penner I talked a little bit about this in my mid-year book freakout tag but I don't know if I really got into it as much as like like other things that bothered me about it spoiler alert I gave this book two stars I actually gave it two and a half and then when I was like writing everything down for this video I decided to bump it down to two because I just didn't like it so this is a story told in two timelines in the 1880s I believe like Victorian era England there was a woman who was an apothecary and she gave poisons to women so that they could kill the abusive men in their lives and then something goes horribly wrong and you watch those events um, like fold out unfold and then in modern London there was a woman I don't remember anyone's name and she is going to London on vacation and she kind of discovers a this bottle that leads her to the breadcrumbs of clues breadcrumb trail of clues to discover more about this apothecary. I was really hopeful and excited about this book because I used to really love historical fiction and I thought, oh, this is about women and it's not about a war. So, you know, there's a good chance that I will like it. Unfortunately, that was not the case. I think when you read the synopsis, at least to me, it really seemed like there was gonna be some sort of mystery or unfolding of surprising events. And that was not the case. So in the past timeline, there's really no mystery because you can kind of tell right away what's gonna happen and then you like actually see what's gonna happen. And then in the modern era, you're watching this woman discover, like investigate and discover who the lost apothecary was, but she doesn't even really figure out the whole story but it's like you as a reader know the whole story because you watched it happen in the past. So that was like one of the things that made it boring for me. And then one of the things that made me not connect with this book like fundamentally is that in no nowhere in the synopsis does it let you know that the desire for motherhood and the longing for motherhood and this desperate need for motherhood is like an intimately central part of the plot. The woman in the past had suffered a miscarriage in her past and was kind of jilted by the father of her child and that kind of sent her down this path of murder, I guess. And then she's really kind of like jolted into whatever the plot is when the client that she's helping is a child and she kind of sees herself become this mother figure for a child. And then in the modern day, the woman is in London and she it's like something with her husband and she had desperately been trying to have a child and is worried the whole book that she is pregnant and this theme of motherhood i like i it was so in your face and not in a way where like as someone who does not want to be a mother i can still appreciate that in books you know what i mean like i read romance novels i can get past it but it was just so just hitting you over the head nonstop that it was just not enjoyable at all and maybe I've talked a little bit too long at this point so anyway two stars I didn't I didn't like it the next book I read was a heart of blood and ashes by Mila Vane this is the first book in the gathering of dragons fantasy romance series I also have the second one right over here a touch of stone and snow which I will eventually read, but I read this book because I saw it at a secondhand bookshop and I was like, oh, I've heard good things about that. And also because it was in May, the or maybe in April, either one, it was the book of the month for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club, which is like a fantasy and romance book club that has a couple of my favorite booktubers who do it every month. So this is basically, this is about Matic. He is a warrior and a, a leader and his parents are murdered by another 
kingdom within this large alliance that had been formed across the land before the events of the book to stand together against this big bad evil that had you know swept across the land and he goes to the council and they're like you cannot take action against the against them because they have provided their explanation for why they killed your parents and in terms of international law they're good to go and so he's like well that's fucked up and then the daughter of the king that killed his parents he believes was the one who lured them to their death and so when he captures her he's like I'm gonna use you blah 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 revenge 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 and she is also kind of bloodthirsty like she hates her dad so that's like the setup she's like a willing captor but all and like kind of like bargains with him to marry her but it's also like it's not romantic um the first time they meet he licks blood off of her hand which is like a little ew a little ew and it's basically just I gave it three stars there were some parts I liked it was just too long it's like 400 five it's over 500 pages this is the longest book I've read so far this year um it's just too long it's not particularly romantic I liked it pretty well like overall I have a good opinion of it like I'm gonna read the next book I'm interested in seeing like what other stuff this author has written especially since Mara from books like whoa says that she has another series that um she prefers and I'm like oh well maybe I'll like that one too so yeah this is just I don't really want to talk about this one more I don't have much to say it was very violent I don't think there was enough sex scenes and I liked the couple some parts of it I was like this guy's an idiot and that's basically it. My favorite book of the month that I read in May was The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Amezi. This is a contemporary, not like adult literary fiction novel about the death of Vivek and basically the events in everyone around them and their family, events in all of their lives that kind of led up to the moment of Vivek's death and then after the moment of Vivek's death, kind of the fallout emotionally of what that was like. And this book is about queerness and identity and spirituality. And Vivek was kind of born with the spirit of his grandmother inside him. And that kind of leads to other things about his identity as he grows older and learns to know him, gets to know himself more. And it was just beautiful. I gave it four and a half stars because at some points I did find myself a little bored but overall like the journey especially like the last couple moments of the book were sensational they were just so well done spectacular and I think the themes and messages of this book just were just Okweke is so talented in so many ways and I just respect them so much I can't wait to read their other books I have fresh water on my kindle I'm gonna read Dear Santhron soon which is their black spirit memoir i'm just so excited i will say content warning for homophobia as well as <sighs> incest i you need to read it to get the context but there is you know somewhat incestuous relationships it's a bit strange you if you read it you will get it just yeah four and a half stars sensational. I just tried to explain this next book and I'm realizing the plot is more complicated to explain than it is to read. It's just a little convoluted crossing, crisscrossing, and I just, I need to just get it out, okay? So the next book I read was Project Duchess by Sabrina Jeffries. This is the first book in the Duke Dynasty series. The general premise of this series is that the there are three dukes there are five children three of them are dukes one of them is the brother of one of the dukes one of them is the twin sister of one of the dukes but there's three dukes in this family their mother was married and widowed three times and each of the books is about one of the dukes and then one of the books is about the sister the other brother gets like a novella that's kind of like the general family relations and then the general premise of the series is they're like, is someone killing our dads? So the first book, the oldest brother, half brother, um, comes to the estate of the youngest half brother Duke because the third husband has just died under tra tragic circumstances. And the youngest Duke is like, hey, I think someone killed my dad. And Fletch, the oldest brother is like, that's super weird, but I guess I'll help you investigate. And he kind of, 
comes up with the excuse to stay at the estate longer than he usually would have to help investigate by becoming involved with preparing the youngest half-brother's cousin on the dad's side for society because their mother is like sad and she likes a project so she's decided to like get their poor cousin ready to present to society and so Fletch and I forget her name but I liked her a lot she's very cool she's very like she trains the dogs for the estate she's not super social but she's very intelligent I really really liked her I completely forget her name though actually I think her name is Beatrice so they're like doing that and they fall in love. So it's the oldest half-brother falling in love with the cousin of the youngest half-brother on the dad's side. So they're not related. But this book was delightful. I gave it four and a half stars. I think I didn't give it five stars because it just like wasn't like a perfect romance. Like it just wasn't, it didn't have that X factor. But I remember just having so much fun listening to this audiobook. The like little fun funny situations that they get into I thought the sex scenes were really good I feel like they had a real connection and chemistry that again you'd think would happen more like all the time in romances but does not so I just really enjoyed this one and then I'm actually going to skip the next book I read and talk about the last book I read because I actually read six books this month and I forgot one of them and because it's the second one in this series and it's called The Bachelor. You might notice all the books are like Project Duchess, Project Runway, The Bachelor, The Bachelor. The other two books in the series are Who Wants to Marry a Duke, like Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire and Undercover Duke, like Undercover Boss. I've read one of those but I read it this month so I'll talk about it another time. Anyway, the second book is about the twin sister of the middle Duke brother falling in love with the heroine from the first book's brother. So it's like she falls in love with the cousin of the youngest Duke, the brother of the girl who's married to the oldest Duke. Does this make sense? Are you, are you getting what I'm putting down here? And so this book, I gave three stars. I didn't like it as much. I feel like it took place over a shorter amount of time. And while there was this definite like attraction between the characters, I don't think it really did enough to develop the emotional relationship between these characters. I also think that obviously in romances, the heroines usually have like a defining hobby that like gives them a quirk or gives them an interest. So in the first book, she had a lot. She was actually very interesting. In the second book, Gwyn, that's her name, Gwyn, her thing is that she really likes architecture and when I say that this comes up not at all in the book it's like mm. she had an interesting backstory and like her past trauma but it just wasn't enough and then the guy, I also forget his name, um, he was like fine, he was a former soldier, he was just like fine, there's like a little bit of espionage in this book, it just wasn't my favorite even though I did enjoy it and I liked the next book in this series too. So that's that book. I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> I can't believe this video is gonna be 20 minutes and I'm only talking about five books. I literally talked so much. Anyway, the last book I'm gonna talk about was Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Ha Lee. So this is a standalone sci-fi novel about what was their name? Gien. And this book, I, which I am an idiot and I didn't like really look up any information about this book before I started. This book is very clearly inspired by the history of Japan's colonization of Korea, which I is not something that I'm super knowledgeable about the intricacies of. So I didn't like immediately realize this, but it's something that I realized as I went on over the course of the book. Anyway, this book is about Guillen and they are an artist. All they wanna do is make art, but there is just not a market for the art of their culture right now since they were officially like colonized and taken over and renamed by this invading government, the occupying government, like five years ago. So there's just not a market for the art of their culture. So they are a desperate starving artist they just want to make art and they get a job in like the military department of the occupying government painting the masks and sigils that will animate their automatons that like do stuff specifically the automaton of this dragon and they're involved in this 
secret project and they're discovering military secrets and the depths of depravity that the occupying military has reached and the weapons that they have and it's kind of about a character who doesn't want to be there forced to be there and while i really enjoyed the ideas and the general story in this book it just i didn't really connect to it in a lot of ways i feel like jebby jebby is their gian jebby jebby is what they're called for most of the book jebby is just like kind of wish-washy they don't really make that many decisions it feels like and i also think that the dragon criminally underutilized in this book i just i don't think the dragon got enough screen time i also think that they severely underuse the fact that Jebby and the dragon can communicate telepathically with each other and it's like they barely have any conversations and it was just like mm, I wanted more but I really love the themes of queerness in this book. I loved that Jebby is a non-binary character and it's just an accepted part of society that there are non-binary people and there's different ways of expressing gender and I really loved just like a lot of things about this book. I talked a lot about Yoon Ha Lee also in my mid-year uh, freak out tag because again this is the author that when I think of all the authors I've read this year the one that I'm most excited to have discovered. They are just, in I'm just really interested in the books that he's written. So yeah, this is the last book. I rated it three stars. It was a solidly average, overall enjoyable, but not particularly great sci-fi read. I do think that this cover is phenomenal. Like I, like the color and the framing, I'm obsessed with the typography too. It's just... I love this cover. This is my favorite cover of the month for sure. Anyway, that's it. That's the last book I read that month and that's all I have to talk about. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. Let me know if you're gonna read any of them and which ones I've like convinced you to maybe check out. If you liked The Lost Apothecary, can we talk about that? I'm interested to know why because it really didn't work for me on a lot of levels and I can see how it would work for other people but I also like don't get it so I would love to talk about that in a non-judgmental way. Okay I will see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye!